All right, here you have an Eagle R2B2T. This has a 104 inch max wrap height. As of April 2021, this will be the only R2B2 unit that we will be selling. So just the R2B2T. I'm gonna kinda just do a quick rundown of operation and how to use this. So when the machine is not in use, whether overnight, through the weekend, it is highly suggested that you plug it into power. It is battery powered, so if you don't charge it, it's not gonna operate the way that it should, so. Deprong, plug it in, unplug it for use. Excuse me here as I walk around and take this video. To turn the machine on, you have a key. Turn it to the on position. Kind of get a have our warning screen about not reading and learning how to operate the machine. Hit accept. Now, one thing before I go to move this machine, you'll see here on the screen it says steering locked. In order to, I just want you to have you do that. So, in order to unlock the steering, you need to take the arm and pull it all the way forward. As you slide it toward the center position, you'll hear that little clunk that it just did. So steering lock, steering unlocked. So if that screen does not say steering unlocked, the machine will not move on its own. Now something to point out, because of how this operates, as it rotates around the pallet, this rubber wheel rides against the pallet. And it's always going in a clockwise fashion, right? Clockwise? Yep. Had to get verification on that. This entire mechanism here in front of me has a large spring, which naturally is gonna wanna pull to the inside. So with how this is designed, as you drive this around your warehouse using the forward and back button, keep in mind that you really don't want to pull this past, let's say, 4 o'clock, and this is 6 o'clock here. You really don't want to go past 5 o'clock. So what happens is you really start to stretch that spring out. So it's meant to be driven in a fashion where you're using just this side of it, whether, whether you're going forward or back. So why don't you go ahead and grab that, and we'll drive it up to the pallet so I can take the video. Upon turning the machine on, and I did not do this, you do have to hit the blue reset button. Now it's not meant to, to move at an incredibly fast rate, so the speed you're watching it move is pretty much as fast as it's going to go. Let me walk around to the other side of this pallet here. So this will take a little bit of seat time to get used to how to operate this, but as you bring the robotic unit forward, you want to have that swing arm kind of in this orientation here. Let's go ahead and run it once, and then I'll go through the settings. Oh. So you'll take the film out of the film carriage. Now this particular pallet that we're wrapping right now has been wrapped a couple times, but you know, stick it through the boxes, tie it to the pallet, however you do your, you'll come up to the screen. You know, again, just showing steering's unlocked. I'm sorry, steering is locked. If it's unlocked and you hit start for whatever reason, it may not operate the way that it should. Go ahead and hit start. So in the settings screen, which I'll go over here in a little bit, once this is done wrapping, that's where you can adjust all your wrap parameters. So we have a lot of things kind of preset, like your speed of how quickly it does travel as it's wrapping, your carriage up and down travel speed. Uh, this particular unit does have a auto film cutoff feature with the simple on off switch. 
you can use or not use that feature depending on if you like it or not. As it's rotating, just I'll talk a little bit more about the machine. You'll notice on the front that round hoop, that is your safety bar. If the robotic unit were to make contact with anything while in operation, it's going to immediately stop. There is a photo eye sensor on that film carriage that is there to detect the top of the load. Your film overlap is adjustable in the settings screen, so if you want more or less film as it's traveling up and above the product, you can make that adjustment. Um, as this is finishing up, I just think that really the big takeaways are that, again, it is battery powered. You do need to charge it. There are two very large batteries inside this machine. You know, if you're just charging it an hour a day and using it the rest of the day, you know, whether it be a shift or two shifts, you're probably not getting the full charge that it needs. So again, when you're done using it, put it in, let it charge all night. The second is driving, making sure you learn how to use that arm and do not stretch it too far to the one side. So you can see there the auto film, cut it at the end of the wrap. So the machine should cycle back around to where we left it or where we started, I should say. In the settings screen, there is an adjustment where you can tell the machine how many quarters your product has. So for this, being a square more or less, it was set to four. Um, as it's going kind of slow here, so see how that wheel rides? Whatever it is that you're wrapping needs to have a flat surface for that wheel to ride on on all four corners. You know, let's say if I had this adjusted down too far, it might want to try to ride in the groove, I'm sorry, the groove that's right here. And maybe if you had a break in the pallet or product that's sticking out and where the next one kind of jots in, that wheel could get lodged in there, causing the arm to jam up, faulting out the operation. So again, make sure that whatever it is that you're wrapping, you have that wheel adjusted so it's got that nice smooth pattern to ride on all the way around. setting screen here just so you can kind of see the screen again I'm trying to hold this here so settings so you can see over here you have your film overlap that's that photo eye sensor I was talking about top wraps your bottom wraps how many times the machine is going to travel up and down during the wrap process and there's where you tell it how many corners the product that your wrapping has. Over here where it says 25, that is the speed in which the machine travels as it's rotating around the product. That's your carriage up speed, your carriage down speed. This is more or less how you adjust your tension. And then the three below that are for the auto film cutoff feature. Um, really, at least these three, you should never have to touch. Um, the rest, you know, you may need to tweak based on your application. Um, you can also save these as different recipes for, you know, up to five different items. So that is the settings screen. Hit the home button to go back. By default, it goes to more or less what we call auto mode, which you just watched work where it's going to, you tie the film off, you hit go, it's going to wrap. When it's done, it's going to cut it. There's your film cut off the scissors. So if I hit that, it turns it off. Hit it again, it turns it back on. If for whatever reason you need to run the machine in manual mode, hit this button here. And then, I'm sorry, not in manual mode because you really can't because it's robotic. But if you needed to jog the carriage up and down, you could do that. How do you get that out of there? Gotcha, home button. Uh, the only other thing I really didn't go over is how to thread the film. Um, it is pretty straightforward. You do have a diagram here on the side. As you open this door, more or less, you set your roll down. The film goes across the two black rollers in front of these two silver rollers and then goes back around what we call the dancer bar, like this. 
So when opening and closing the door, make sure you're using the handle. You can see that release pin that's there. The machine also does have a high and low ratio. Um, you can change the gearing in here. Um, for what we do, most of the time we leave it on that low ratio. You're still getting a very high percentage of pre-stretch when adjusted like that. Hope this video helps. Thank you. Okay, I lied. I had a little bit more information I didn't talk about. So, two things. Noticed that once the carriage was raised up on the back of the machine here, there is a lock and unlock switch. In the unlock position, it unlocks the drives to the motor or to the wheels so that you as the operator or whoever can easily roll this around. Say you're mid warehouse and the battery dies and you need to move it back. That's how you can do that. Simply put it back in the lock position and see, it won't move anymore unless driven with the control panel. When we ship this to you, it's gonna come with the film carriage removed. So we've already taken the bolts out, but there are four Allen head bolts, two there, and then two right directly across from that. This sits in a track here, so you simply lift the carriage up and onto the track. This large electrical connector can really only go one way. So you plug that in, put the locks on, you kind of see here as we lift the carriage off so one person can do it just know it's a little heavy probably 80 pounds or so and then the mast will also be in the lowered position just so it doesn't get damaged during transit <clears throat> there are four i think they're 17 millimeter uh, stainless steel bolts those have to be removed and then this mast will actually pivot down it's on a hinge system uh, inside the toolbox that we give you Inside of this, I'm not going to open up, is your, your uh, alarm lights that would go on to the top of the machine. Um, it gets that audible beep and the light showing you whether if it's uh, working or not working. Some of the replacement parts, springs, and stuff that we give you. In this red bag is a toolkit, which has all the wrenches and allen wrenches and stuff that you need to assemble this once on site. And then two keys that you would use to you know, access the doors that are there. So...